Okay, so I'm going to open this radio up here and take a look inside, see what I'm working with. There's a little button on the bottom, the battery just slides right off. And here's the chassis of the radio underneath. Uh, that's solid there. You have this one screw to take out, and uh, that's all for the back side. Leave these two where they are. You take the screws out for the belt clip and remove the belt clip if you have one on there. Um, take your antenna off, just unscrew it. Um, you're going to pull your knobs straight off, and then underneath the knobs and the antenna are these uh, brass collars. You need like some needle nose or uh, uh, you know, a spanner of some type to, uh, to twist those out. So you have three of those there to take off. And then this will just slide straight to the top and off. Okay, so then once you get to this point, um, you pretty much just can lift the chassis straight up out. And I've got I've got the other screws out of this already, so <clears throat> it should come out one piece like that. Um, there'll still be a, uh, a copper shield on here, and there's a couple of screws on the board. If you want to take the board the rest of the way off, um, I elected to. There's also some uh, rubber gaskets and so forth that'll fall out as you as you take it apart. But it's pretty much the inside of the radio right there. And uh, so what I'm looking to do is up in the space here where the speaker goes. I've pulled that out already. I'm going to take that speaker out and hopefully use that as a spot to put my GPS in here. And it looks a little thick, in, and it is. So I, I have a feeling I'm going to be modifying the GPS to separate the antenna from the board and, and uh, gain a little more clearance there. So looking at the board, I, I see some interesting things here. First of all, this radio is just plain. There's nothing There's nothing on the front at all except for the speaker grill. There's no uh, features there. But when you open up the uh, radio and you look at it, you see all these contacts. This is probably um, the same board as the next higher up model, which has a keypad and it also has a display. So uh, that's, that's the case with a lot of these radios. They just make one board and then they, they add or subtract options to make higher or lower priced radios. Uh, here's where the speaker uh, plugged in at. There's the microphone. Here's the jacks for the speaker mic. And this is uh, this is crucial here because it actually says right on the board here, PTT. And we've got mic. AFG, which is probably audio frequency ground. So uh, there's a lot of connections right there. And uh, when looking up the open tracker, it's got a lot of the same connections. It needs uh, an output to your microphone. It needs, uh, there's SP for speaker. It needs to go to the to the tracker so it can hear PTT to transmit. So these are where I'm gonna make my connections for that stuff right there. And once you take the screws out, you can flip the board over. And this is also nice because uh, I've been looking, I can't find a uh, service manual to tell me exactly what all these contacts are, but this whole area and this cutout in the heat sink here we're, uh, we're for an option board of some kind. And it already has PL and uh, uh, it already has tone features in the board, so this would be for like a scrambler or uh, maybe a trunking uh, option board there because it looks like some clock ready. Um, these look like serial lines. But the one I'm, I'm interested in here, well, two really, uh, ground and 5C. Apparently 5C in Singapore speak, you know, wherever they make this radio, that means 5 volts. So uh, that's where I'm going to pick up my, my power to run the open tracker and the GPS. So uh, that'll, that'll, that'll be the least power consumption I can do. Um, next to, uh, there's one last thing I, I think I can do. Uh, that might save a few milliamp, but it's it's really looking at the long term uh, battery life. But um, this board communicates in serial RS two thirty two. The D GPS, it's uh, it's many outputs here. It has 
TTL and RS-232 on it. So I think, uh, you know, serial is plus or minus 13 volts. Um, we're working with a 5 volt power supply here. So there's there's some conversion happening to, uh, to make that plus or minus 13 that the spec says. It may be as much as 10. Uh, it could be as little as five. I, I guess uh, you can you can drive. You know the the signals are inverted, so I think even at plus or minus five volts, uh, RS two thirty two would work fine at a at a short distance. But uh, TTL is a five volt signal, three point three to five volt, and uh, I think it's going to have just that little less impact to run TTL. But in order to do that, I'm going to have to get uh, Scott's new. Tracker 3 mini board, uh, which I, I do plan to. It has a USB port right on it, so uh, no wiring up a, uh, a serial cable for this thing to program it. So that'll be nice. All right, well, after looking at this, I found that uh, one of these pins, you can see it on the left right there, that hole is empty. That's supposed to be a black wire. Um, the wire fell right out of the socket just uh, handling it like this so uh, the contact still being inside the connector there so I guess that was a bad crimp so uh, I contacted Scott by email um, I had an answer within like five minutes and he's gonna send me another one and uh, the advantage of this too is you see how short these wires are um, GPS is going to go up in this area and the tracker is going to fit. I'm gonna watch that heat sink grease. That stuff multiplies. This tracker is gonna fit right in here, uh, right in the spot where the option board would be. So um, you can see those wires. Those wires are just not uh, not going to be quite long enough. So the one he's sending me has uh, six inch wires. So that should be perfect. So I'll be able to get that in there. and have this up in this range here somewhere and uh, probably come in through the side to get underneath there to where the board is behind here and uh, that'll be real nice.